What's up guys? My name is uh, Ty Zen and uh, I want to welcome you guys to our uh, cryptocurrency trading and investing channel. This is a uh, long-term wealth creation channel. This is not a tech channel. This is not a political drama channel. Okay. So in this video, guys, uh, I'm going to share with you guys something that um, happens to all of us on our journey to creating wealth, whether it's in um, cryptocurrency trading or investing or traditional markets or entrepreneurship. I just got through having lunch at uh, this, um, I'm in the um, 99 Ranch shopping center in Dallas right now. Just got through having lunch at the um, Thai restaurant called Two Thai. So if you guys like um, Thai food, that's uh, one of the places that you might want to check out while you're in Dallas, okay? It's uh, um, in this 99 Ranch shopping center and across the highway here, I'm about to cross the, uh, the, um, the bush uh, tollway here and they got the um, H Mart, the Korean shopping center on that side too, okay? So just a little bit of background about where I'm at in Dallas right now. So, uh, in this video, guys, I want to talk about something that happens to all of us in, in our journey to creating wealth for ourselves and our family. Um, many of you guys know that I grew up, I came to America as a uh, Vietnamese refugee. I, came to, uh, I grew up in the, um, working in the you know, fruit and vegetable fields, the farms in America. I worked in the sweatshops in America. I worked on the ship docks in America and then I went to prison for drugs when I was 18 years old I came out rebuilt my life and today you know I'm a uh, million dollar uh, 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 cryptocurrency trader slash investor slash all this other stuff okay so um, the, the the so <laughs> it's weird the guy, uh, there's a dairy truck in front of me. There's a Borden dairy truck in front of me. And they were unloading some stuff and they left all their computers to uh, their inventory computer on the back of the truck. And it was pulling off and it's about to drop. And a guy from another utility truck came over the city uh, utility truck that was fixing the electrical wires, chased after him to grab the computer to let him know that it was about to drop. So. Uh, sorry about that distraction, guys, but the uh, Borden, the the the, the Borden uh, dairy truck is still in front of me here. Um, anyways, so many of you guys know that I grew up in the ghetto, and I ended up becoming a million dollar trader here. If you've been following me over for the uh, last five six years on our channel, <clears throat> and recently, you know, recently we brought on an intern. Uh, named Casey Wynn, who just graduated from college uh, a couple months ago, and um, her dad reached out to me. We were uh, her dad and I are good friends since childhood, and asked me, "Hey, man, uh, my daughter just graduated college, and um, she wants to, uh, you know, she needs to do something after college. I don't know what she needs to do, get a job or whatever. You know, I, I don't know." And I said, "Hey, you know." And he said that, hey, since you're in the blockchain space, it's a, you always tell, talking about how it's a fast-growing industry. Um, uh, could you uh, talk to uh, Casey and give her some guidance or whatever? So I talked to Casey, and she said that. So I, I told her if she is interested in looking for an entry-level job just out of college, you know, I know lots of cryptocurrency projects raised a bunch of money, and they're always hiring people. You know, everybody, every... Uh, blockchain company and project is hiring people so it's it's a booming industry billions of dollars are coming into it every year so it's very easy to get a job in the cryptocurrency space um, and I told her that and I and I outlined to her that hey look you just left college and you're about to embark on your wealth creation journey okay and your money making journey and there's two routes that you can take you can take the traditional route and go get a job, work nine to five. You just got out of college, so more than likely your entry uh, pay 
your uh, first job, they'll probably pay you anywhere 50, 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars. That's a standard, typical uh, entry level job just coming out of college for someone uh, who just came out of college. And, um, and I told her, but the downside to that is that if you do that, then what happens is that you are going to be stuck working to nine to five and you'll work and then you'll, you know, after five, 10 years, you'll work your way up and you're making 100,000, 120, $130,000 a year um, if you're lucky, you know, and if you have the talent for it. And that's it. You're going to be stuck there. Um, you're going to start with about $50,000 a year and you're a cap, the highest amount of money that you'll ever make. Um, being an employee working nine to five um, is around anywhere between fifty to one hundred fifty thousand a year, and I told her I know that because I spent many years doing that, and that's why I got into trading, into investing, into real estate, into entrepreneurship because I was looking for a different route that a person with nothing can actually become a millionaire or become a multi-millionaire. Uh, and, and, and stuff like that, you know. And I have no qualms about making money, guys. I love to make money. I like to make the money so I can have more freedom in my life. I don't make more money so that I can go buy more doodads and more junk and more toys uh, for my house. That's not what I'm interested in. I, I am interested in making more money because the more money I have, the more freedom I have, the more time I have to myself, and the more freedom I have to say whatever the fuck I want to say online, okay, or anywhere I go, okay? So, that's the reason why I like to make more money. It has nothing to do with Lamborghinis, Ferraris, or, 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 or yachts, or sailboats, or none of that stupid shit. Can I get it? Yes, but that's not the reason why I'm doing that, okay? The reason why I'm making money. Anyway, I told Casey when I first talked to her, I said, hey, so you can go the employee route and do that, or you can go the entrepreneur slash investor route like me and leonfood.com and David uh, Fong on our team did. And, and the advantage of that is that there is no cap. There's no limit to how much money you can make. It's up to you to determine how much money you make and what you want to make. And, and the way that you do that is by providing value to the rest of the world. The more value that you provide to the rest of the world, then the more money that you can make as an entrepreneur, as an investor, and things like that. And I told her the downside of being an entrepreneur slash investor slash trader, however you want to look at it, the downside to that is that there are no short-term gains. It's rare that you have short-term gains. Um, you have to grind it out, you have to work your ass off, you got to build a product, create a service, or do something that provides value to other people, and that's how you get paid, okay? It's not like working a job nine to five where you, sh you, you show your ass up at the front door of the business every day, you clock in, and you get paid at the end of the week whether you provide any value or, or, or anything, you know? Um, or, so that's, that's, my, that's what I told her. I said the advantage of getting a job working nine to five is that there's instant gratification, there's instant money coming in, nobody's laughing at you, your friends, your classmates, your college buddies, uh, your relatives, your aunts, your uncles, nobody's giving you a hard time because you did the same shit that everybody else, all the other uh, people did that are broke did. They come out of college, go get a fucking job, work nine to five, and you're stuck there. Your ass is stuck there, that's it. You ain't fucking going nowhere, okay? And then, but the, 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 you get instant gratification, short-term gains, and nobody's fucking with you, nobody's talking shit about you, nobody's gonna criticize you, nobody's gonna troll you. But, so that's the advantage. But the downside is that you're stuck working the nine to five for the rest of your life, making 50 to $150,000 in the US, okay? And some of you guys might seem like that's a lot, 50 to $150,000 a year. You guys might seem like that's a lot, but I want to put it in perspective, okay? Making fifty to one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year in America is the same as making like, like five hundred to fifteen hundred dollars in the Philippines, in Thailand, or in Vietnam, in Cambodia, or, or someplace like that. Okay, so if if you think that making you know fifty thousand dollars a year is, is a lot, right? 
the, the think about making how much it would be to make uh, that in those other countries. Okay, and and I did the math on there. Um, if you make fifty thousand dollars a year, that's about four thousand dollars a month. Okay, so l let me say those numbers again so it makes more sense to you guys. Okay, because I said it wrong uh, earlier. What I meant was that the 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 value of someone making fifty to one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year that's about fifty thousand dollars a year is about four hundred dollars a month. Okay, so if you're making four hundred dollars a month, I mean four thousand dollars a month in America, that would be the equivalent of somebody making four hundred dollars a month in Vietnam, in Africa, in the Philippines, uh, in Nigeria, okay, in Mexico, okay. So I just want to just throw out some places where it would be the equivalent. Because the cost of living in America is extremely high. So if you make $4,000 a month, it's no different than one of those third world countries making $400 a month. Okay? So I, that way you guys have some type of perspective on what I'm talking about. Okay? So someone that's making um, $150,000 a month, uh, I mean $150,000 a year in America, that would be the equivalent of somebody making like $1,200, I mean $12,000 a month in America. That would be the same as somebody making $1,200 a month in Vietnam, in Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, uh, Nigeria, Mexico, Philippines, okay? Um, so that, that's how much that would be, okay? So that you have an idea in your mind what amounts of money I'm talking about. So I talked to Casey and she said, yeah, I'm going to do this, okay? <clears throat> I didn't want to take the entrepreneur and investor route because I don't want to be capped. I don't want to have a limit that that's all I'm ever going to make is $150,000 a year in America or the equivalent of like, you know, $1,200 a month in one of the third world countries, okay? Um, and I said, well, if you choose to go the entrepreneur and the investor route, right, you have to be able to accept criticism and trolling from people, okay? You have to be able to accept that people will troll you, okay? And you got to learn to love them. And those trolls can be your own family members, your own classmates, your own friends, your own aunts and uncles, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, everybody. Even your little two-year-old sister will be trolling you, okay? Like, why the fuck ain't you going to work or a good job and, you know, sit, sitting around, you know, goofing off all day, right? So these, these are the things your friends, you know, when you go online, people are going to criticize you. When you make videos... There's going to be dumbass trolls uh, that, that's going to try to troll you and comment and give you negative feedback and all this other shit, okay? Man, I just ran over a huge cardboard box, man. I just ran over a massive cardboard box that you guys might have seen it fly back behind me as I was running over it, okay? Anyway, and I said, are you prepared for that, Casey? And she said, yes. And then I also asked her, you know, like, hey, are you prepared to have success in your life? Because when you are interning for, uh, with us, right, we're going to show you stuff and you're going to be moving your ass along, okay? You're going to move along. And I told her the reason why it took me, I'm 40, in my, I'm, I'm in my mid-40s right now, okay? And I'm 47 in Vietnam and I think like 44 or 45 in America, sim simply because when I came to America, my uncle wrote down the wrong age when I was in America. So my American IDs and stuff say that I'm like 45, I think, and then my, uh, my 44, 45, and then my, um, my, uh, my uh, Vietnamese ID says that I'm 47, okay? So anyways, so we'll just say mid-40s just to be on the safe side, okay? So anyway, my, um, <coughs> excuse me. So I asked, I said, are you prepared to work your ass off and do the things that you need to do to become wealthy and successful. And she said, yeah. And I said, I asked her, are you prepared for the things that's coming? Because you're hanging around us, we know a bunch of crypto millionaires. And we're gonna introduce you to them. Are you gonna sit there and freeze like a deer in headlights when you meet them? Or are you gonna sit there and grill them for answers and ask them questions on how to become wealthy? And she said, yeah, I'm gonna take advantage of it. And the first time, I introduced her to one of my millionaire friends in crypto, right? She locked up. I think it was uh, Vacano. Vacano is a Colombian uh, slash Venezuelan. He's in around the Colombia, Venezuela area, and he's the owner and the CEO and the founder of Panda Exchange. You guys go check it out. 
he's opening up a, a new exchange in that area. And he said that, so when I introduced uh, her to him, she, she froze up. Uh, and you guys can go back to one of our old videos and watch it. And she sat there and never said nothing during the whole interview, right? And she just froze up, right? So afterwards I asked her, I said, hey, are you, how come you didn't ask him anything? I told you I'm gonna introduce you to a bunch of my millionaire friends in crypto. When you meet him, you need to ask him, how do I do this? What do I need to do? All this other stuff. And all you did was just froze up. And she said that she did, you know, uh, she was freaking out because she finally got a chance to talk to a, a, a millionaire and she just froze up, okay? And I said, don't do that dumb shit again because if you do that, then what it does is it puts in your, it writes the software in your mind, it burns into your memory that you're not worthy of being a millionaire. And that's the reason why you won't ask him anything because you don't think that you're actually worthy. And if you keep doing that, it's gonna burn that into your brain that I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, I'm never gonna be a millionaire. It's not, it's for someone else, but not for me, okay? So I told her, don't do that dumb shit again. Next time you meet a millionaire, talk to them like you do your buddies or your friends, your classmates and everything. Don't treat them any other special. Don't talk to me like I'm special or something. I'm just another motherfucker that grew up in the ghetto right down the street from where you live and now I figured out how to make money and that's why I'm here, okay? Don't, don't, don't do that, okay? So she said, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. And it happened a few other times, and I don't mind. I reminded her again, right? And now, just a few days ago, over the past weekend, she uh, came to Dallas, Casey and uh, uh, came all the way to Dallas to shoot some videos with me and Leon for some, uh, some stuff, some projects that we're working on, right? And what happened was, when she did that, right, we were shooting uh, some videos, and when we were done, there was like a three, like I think like a, no, no, like a five hour gap, okay? We finished like around 1 p.m. And I told her, I said, hey, me and Leon have to run and go do a bunch of stuff, you know, run a few bunch of errands, meet up with a bunch of, of uh, uh, um, accounting, CPAs, and, and lawyers, and all kinds of stuff, right, for our business. Right? We gotta run a bunch of business errands since we're here in Dallas together. And, and, uh, he's going to be driving with me uh, to go meet up with these people and since he's not using his Tesla why don't you ask him uh, because she told me when she first saw his Tesla she was like wow you know that's pretty cool because Casey comes from a very small town remember I told you guys that I grew up in the ghetto I grew up in the ghetto side of the town of Port Arthur and she grew up on the decent side of town not the rich neighborhoods or anything but in the decent side of town right better than the ghetto that I grew up in. So when there's not too many uh, Teslas or electric cars there, so she, she thought it was cool because that's the uh, first time that she, she had seen a, uh, a, a Tesla in person. And she mentioned that earlier in the day. So when we were finished at 1 p.m., right, I told her, I said, hey, me and Leon got to run a bunch of business errands for about five hours and he's going to be driving with me. He's going to be riding in the car with me. Why don't you ask him, hey, um, if you're not using your Tesla, instead of just parking here at Ty's house, why don't you let me, uh, 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 let me borrow it so I can go run and shoot a bunch of videos in the Tesla uh, uh, and, and, and test drive it and then shoot a bunch of uh, videos for the channel, right? And she said, man, there's, hell no, I can't ask him that, right? I, I can't ask him that. And I'm like, why not? Why can't you ask him that? Why can't you open your mouth and say, Leon, since you're riding with Ty for the next five hours and your Tesla's not uh, being used here, right? Let me borrow it for a few hours so I can go shoot some videos on it and drive around town and test it out, right? I said, what is wrong with you? You, just, you, you graduate from college with a four-year degree, right? You can't say those words in English. Hey, Leon, can I borrow your Tesla for the next couple hours since you ain't using it? And she realized, you know, and I said that if you want something in life, you gotta open your mouth and go ask people for it. The people that have it, you gotta ask them for it. If people have money and you want it, you gotta ask them for it. If people have a car you wanna drive, you gotta ask them for it. If they have knowledge that you don't have and you want that knowledge, you have to ask them for it. Nothing, nobody's gonna give you nothing for nothing, okay? You gotta get off your butt and go and ask them. So she said, all right. She turned around, Leon walks by and she goes, hey Leon, let me borrow your car, your Tesla, since you ain't using it, since you're riding with Ty, right? 
And Leon looked at her uh, 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 surprised like this, like, right? And she goes, yeah, uh, since you ain't gonna use it, instead of leaving it there, let me drive it around and shoot some video uh, for uh, y'all's channel uh, with it, right? And so Leon reached in his pocket and he goes, okay, uh, have you ever driven an electric car before? And she said, no, uh, that's the first electric car I've seen. And he goes, okay, let me show you how to start it and stop and, and use it. So he took uh, leonfood.com, took Casey out there, showed her how to start the car, how to stop the car, how to lock it, and, you know, do all that stuff, you know, basic stuff on, on, on how to use the car. And so she took off with the car. And the entire day, Leon never said nothing to me. He never said nothing to me like, hey, why did you uh, uh, tell her to ask me to borrow my car for? He never said nothing. He didn't even give a shit. He didn't even give a shit, right? He was actually glad that he was able to help her out because she'd never driven an electric car before. And this way, she has an opportunity to drive an electric car and, and experience it and get to know what it's like, right? Instead of just seeing it on TV or on YouTube or, or in, the, in the newspapers and shit, she actually drives and gets to experience it. And so you'll see some videos that Casey puts out with her in leonfood.com's Tesla. And that's how she ended up driving the Tesla, right? And uh, he said, hey, um, when you run it down, you know, stop by the supercharger, the Tesla supercharger, and charge it up so that you can get some experience in charging an electric car too. That'll be pretty cool. So she did do that too, okay? The reason why I'm sharing this story with you guys about all this, okay, is one is that Casey freaked out. She literally freaked out like, well, no, I can't ask him for the car. So the lesson that I want you guys to learn is that if you want something in your life, you got to open your mouth and ask you for it and ask someone for it. If you don't ask, you'll never freaking get it. Okay. Because nobody in the world knows that you want it. Okay. So you open your mouth and you got to ask for what you want. She wanted to test drive an electric car, the Tesla. So she opened her mouth, went, you know, and asked Leon and she had an opportunity to drive it. Okay. The second thing, the second lesson that I want you guys to learn from this whole uh, uh, Tesla fiasco or Tesla story, I should say, with uh, Casey and LeonFood.com is this, okay? Is that when, if you guys look at it, why was, I asked Casey, why were you afraid to ask him, right? Why were you afraid to ask somebody else to drive their car? And... She said, well, I didn't want to mess it up or I didn't want to and gave me all these other bullshit excuses, okay? They're all bullshit excuses. The reason why they're bullshit excuses is because they were all negative excuses, okay? They were all excuses that made absolutely no freaking sense if you think about it logically, okay? She's working on our team. Leon knows that she's a responsible person. I know she's a responsible person. She's not gonna go out there and go get drunk in the, in the Tesla and go do something stupid, right? Right? She knows how to drive a car. She's been driving cars for many years in America, right? She has a driver's license. She is insured. So that means that whatever car that she drives, if she gets into a wreck or something, the insurance company is gonna take care of it. Leon's Tesla is also insured. So that means that if anybody drives or whatever it messes up, the insurance company is gonna pay for it. So who gives a shit? Who gives a shit if, if, if she messes it up, you know, right? If she, but we know that she's not going to go out there and do that intentionally, okay? So that's why I encourage her to go and ask him, okay? Whenever you are afraid to ask someone for something, right, like Casey did, the reason why I told her not to do that and I, the reason why I knew, I knew that when I told Casey, hey, go ask him, you can borrow his Tesla, I knew that that would create lots of friction inside her head. I knew that because I've been through that hundreds of times in my life and I've seen other people go through it hundreds of times in their life already. So there's nothing new about that to me, okay? I knew that she would be afraid to ask because she can say that the excuse, oh, I don't want to mess up his car or whatever, that's a bunch of bullshit excuse because both sides have in auto insurance, so it's going to be covered, so who cares, okay? The reason why she was uncomfortable because she didn't believe she deserved it. And the reason why I, I forced her to go and ask him to borrow his Tesla and go drive it, because I wanted to shatter that limiting belief, that negative belief that she had in her head, okay? 
because as long as she has that belief in her head that oh I don't deserve to drive a Tesla I don't deserve to drive a fancy car I don't deserve this I don't you know uh, I shouldn't be asking someone that drives a, a nicer car than me uh, uh, to borrow their car right what she's doing is she's subconsciously and unconsciously burning in her brain in here guys in here okay she's burning in her brain the idea that she doesn't deserve it and there is absolutely nothing anyone can do to make you become wealthy if in your brain you believe that you don't deserve it okay so the reason why I force her to go ask him to open your mouth ask him to borrow his car and go drive around is not so that she can be a baller or not like she can you know go take pictures and brag to her friends that she's driving a Tesla or whatever it's none of that dumb shit it's to help break the limiting belief the negative limiting belief that's in her head the belief that oh I don't deserve this or they so you know uh, they'll say no if I ask to drive their car okay all those negative limiting beliefs do not help us become uh, uh, wealthy guys that's the reason why I uh, um, I uh, encourage her to uh, to do that okay so I hope that in some way this video helps you guys um, understand uh, to to be careful about the limiting the negative limiting beliefs that exist in our heads that hold us back okay because no matter how many videos that you guys watch from us no matter how much you guys follow us on social media and everything and follow our channels over the years right if you have that negative belief that negative limiting belief in your mind that belief that you don't deserve this or you don't deserve to be wealthy or you know hey I'm too uh, poor I'm a girl I'm black I'm Mexican or or I'm Spanish or hey I'm an immigrant I'm a refugee right and that I cannot become wealthy if you have all these dumbass bullshit ass negative limiting beliefs in your head you will never freaking go anywhere it doesn't matter you can be interning with us you can sit there right next to me and every time I click a mouse to make a trade in crypto or in Bitcoin right you still will not become wealthy because nothing has changed up here nothing has changed up here okay because as long as you have that that ghetto poverty you know barrio mindset the slum mindset up here you ain't going nowhere okay and that was the reason why I forced her to go ahead and ask Leon for the uh, the uh, to borrow the keys to the car okay so I hope that this video helps you guys in some way understand right that be careful be careful when we go out there and we see somebody uh, uh, driving a Lamborghini uh, or wearing a Rolex watch or have a beautiful girl or they're eating a, 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 a you know a tomahawk ribeye steak and, and you're not you know right and you say to yourself like oh that's bullshit there you know they shouldn't be doing that they shouldn't be flaunting their wealth like that or you know they shouldn't be doing that or uh, why does he deserve that hot chick like that all those are negative limiting beliefs that we subconsciously engrave into our brain and the more that we do that the longer it takes the reason why it took me I'm in my mid 40s now the reason why it took me over three decades of my adult life you know to become wealthy was because it took that long for me to figure out that my negative limiting beliefs and the poverty mindset that I had was holding me back from creating wealth and this is the reason why if you take everything away from me today and you get you take all my property and you take all my money away I promise you that within three to six months I will be back on my feet doing the same fucking shit that I'm doing right now the reason why is because my mindset you didn't take away my belief system right if you can go into my head right you know what if you want to get me poor and you want to make me go broke you know don't take the shit away from me you plug me into one of those matrix uh, uh, chairs and you stick that thing in my head the, the plug in my head and you erase my whole memory and and and, and 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 you get rid of my strong wealth mindset in here and then that's when I'll go broke and go poor again okay but as long as that mindset is in here and I don't have any brain damage or brain injuries or something I am fucking unstoppable you ain't gonna stop me for shit okay and the reason why I share that with you guys okay is because it's sad to say man but 
there was a time when um when uh when I was growing up in the ghetto I remember I was working at the ship docks okay I remember I was working at the ship docks I had already dropped out of high school I was working at the ship docks I was, I was repairing this commercial fishing boat and there was this Vietnamese guy he had an attractive daughter and the daughter was bringing lunch down to the boat for her dad and for all the guys working on the boat okay and I was one of the mechanics that was working on the boat. I was not like the deck hand. I was not the fisherman. I was the mechanic working on there. But the daughter did not know that. She just saw me working on the boat. I had grease, oil all over my face, my hands and everything. So to her, I was just another fisherman on the, on the boat, right? And I remember her dad saying that, you know, hey, just, just put the lunch there and just take off. I don't want you talking to these bums and these losers here. You're in college and I need you talking, you know, to guys that go to college that's going to become a doctor or a lawyer someday. Okay? I still remember that scene in my head to this day. I still remember what she looks like. I still remember what that guy looks like, that Vietnamese guy. The Vietnamese guy was an older guy and he's from the city of, uh, he's from central Vietnam. And they speak in a very, very thick thick, extremely thick accent, right? So since I am from South Vietnam, I speak with a different accent. And <clears throat> the guy thought that I could not understand what he said to his daughter. Because he spoke to his daughter in a really thick accent. And he thought that I was not able to understand it. <clears throat> okay? Because he's from the uh, Central Vietnam around the, the what's called the Way area. <coughs> The, uh, the city of Wei, H-U-E, and that's the former imperial, the, the emperor's uh, city, the palace, the capital of Vietnam. So they have a different accent than me coming from the south, uh, you know, 10 hours uh, south of Ho Chi Minh City. So I speak with a different accent in Vietnamese. So he said it in his accent, and he thought that I would never understand what he is saying. He thought that I would be, you know, uh, I was young and I was uneducated, and I would not have a clue what he's saying and what happened was I did understand it and what is sad is that when the daughter left and we were eating lunch together with the owner of that boat right and I just looked at him I looked at him but I didn't look at him with malice I didn't look at him like he was a bad person for saying that to his daughter to stay away from me and the other guys on his boat right because if I was in his shoes I would tell my daughter the same thing too don't be hanging around with these fucking losers on the boat, man. You're in college. Go talk to the guys. Meet the guys that's in your college, right? And since I dropped out of high school at that time, and I was not academically inclined, okay? I was not, you know, good in math and science and all that other stuff. And I didn't know that stuff. And I sat there and I looked at that the boat owner while we were eating lunch together. I looked at him... And in my head, in my brain, I was thinking like, man, is this, is this how it's going to be? Is this for the rest of my life, man? I, this, is, this is the life that I'm going to live? Man, that sucks, man. I have no high school degree. I have no college education. I'm just a blue collar worker, a boat mechanic. I'm down here fixing these, you know, dirty ass diesel engines inside these stinky ass, you know, maggot infested you know, engine rooms, and it was, it really hurt at that time, and it was really sad to me inside, because I was thinking, man, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 15, I'm 16, 17 years old, it was somewhere around there, and I'm thinking, like, man, I'm, for the rest of my life, I'm going to be stuck doing this blue-collar work, doing this bullshit, and this is as far as I have, I'm ever going to go in life, is just be a boat mechanic, right? This is it. I was born in Vietnam. I left Vietnam as a refugee. I came to Malaysia. I was a Malaysian refugee, uh, lived in the Malaysian uh, refugee camps there. And then I came to America as an immigrant, you know, as a refugee. And, and this is it. This is as far as I'm ever going to go in life is I'm getting to this point where I'm a boat mechanic, go down there. You know, I was living near the city of Houston at that time. And... That's it, you know. Go, go, go. Fix boats and and 
and and that's as that's, that's as far as I'm ever gonna go in life, right? And I used to pity myself. I used to feel bad for myself. I used to ask myself like, hey, you know, why did I grow up, you know, in a poor family? How come I'm not, you know, smart like those other Asian kids that's good in math and science? And so. I used to sit there and believe in all these negative beliefs, okay? And I never realized that it was holding me back. I never realized that, that, that those ideas, every time I said that to myself, every time I said that, you know, every time I asked myself, hey, why did I grow up in a poor family? Why am I not educated? Why couldn't I, you know, go to college like everybody else, right? How come my family was so poor that I had to drop out of school to help them? Every time I said one of those statements, what I was doing was I was burning an image into my head. It's like, it's like I was cutting a groove. I was cutting a groove. I was cutting a groove into my brain. And it wasn't until, you know, many, many years later, you know, like near over a decade later, before I realized that those negative beliefs were really destroying my life and that was why I couldn't make any money. I did not make any money guys in my life. I did not make more than like $35,000 a year until I was 35 years old. Okay. I'm sharing this with you guys. Okay. Not to impress you guys, not to, you know, show that, you know, act like I'm a badass or something. You know, I share these stories with you guys and these experiences with you guys and the things that I see going on and the things that I share with Casey and, uh, and the people that work around me, right? Is because you might be watching this video and you're out there and you're struggling. You might be at a place where you think, man, is this ever going to change? Is my life ever going to change, right? You might be living in Nigeria. You might be living in the Philippines. You might be living in Vietnam. You might live in a country. You might even be living in the U.S. You might be living in Compton. Okay, you might be living in, in Fifth Ward in Houston. You might be living in the ghettos of Illinois or in Detroit or in New York or whatever. I don't care where you guys are living at, okay? You might be living in Iran or Iraq or some place like that right now where bombs are being dropped on you every day. You might be living in Aleppo and you're watching this video, right? And what I want to share with you guys is you got to stay mentally strong, okay? You can have bombs drop on you. You can be put in a 6 foot by 10 foot concrete cell and be left there for an entire month without seeing anybody, okay? Like I was when I was in the hole in prison, right? But here's the thing, guys. There's one thing that no one can ever take away from you, and there's nothing, there's one thing that no one can ever change, okay? And that's what's in here, what you, you believe in, okay? What you believe in and what you say to yourself every day. This is the reason why, right, I make these videos because I know that there's out there people right now listening to this, okay, that they might be stuck in a situation that they might not see an end. They might not see any daylight, right? You might be watching this and you might have smuggled a phone into a prison or you might be in a war zone, you might be laying in a hospital bed right now. But I want you to know this, okay? If you're listening to this video, is that no matter what happens outside of you, okay? From without you, as long as from within you, within you and within here, your mindset, you do not allow someone to plant that negative seed in your head, then you will succeed, my friend. You will go beyond, you will you will escape that prison that you are currently in, whether it's a hospital, whether it's a real prison, or whether it's a war zone, whether it's a ghetto, whether it's a poor family, whether it's, you know, the barrios, the slums, you will be able to escape that, okay? As long as you don't allow those negative limiting beliefs to set in in your head, okay? So I know that I started this video out talking about, you know, um, the example and the story and the case study with um, with uh, Casey being afraid to ask to borrow the car. But if there's nothing that you guys learn from this video, okay, just remember this, guys. 
be very careful about the things that you say and the things that you do that imprints a negative limiting belief and plants a negative seed inside your head okay because once it's in there it's extremely difficult to eradicate and eliminate especially when you don't have someone around you that is educated on negative limiting beliefs and how to eliminate them like myself okay to be there and point it out to you so when I have Casey doing these things it's so that I can have her I can point it out to her right the reason why it's going to take her three to four years to become financially free and become wealthy instead of 30, three decades like myself is because she's working around us and we're pointing it out to her. We're pointing it out to her every day. And that's what you need, okay? If you're out there and you're struggling, surround yourself with people that have overcome those negative limiting beliefs and can help you identify them and then, and then learn from them, okay? So... Um, I'm running around here. I'm trying to find this uh, uh, 15 microfarad, right? Um, microfarad for 370 volt right here for my air conditioning unit on the bottom floor. Yesterday, I was in the middle of uh, showing uh, somebody the house and the air conditioning stopped working, okay? So uh, I'm selling my house here in North Dallas for 375000 Anybody that's interested, I'm taking cryptocurrency for it as long as it trades over a million dollars a day. Okay? So, if someone has an interest in buying investment property or anything like that um, in North Dallas, let me know. Okay? Um, so, here's the other thing too, guys. Right? If you guys like what I'm sharing with you guys, right, make sure that you uh, follow me on, um, on uh, Twitter at Hey Tai Zen. If you guys like what uh, Casey is sharing with you on her journey to creating wealth, make sure you guys subscribe. Follow her on Twitter as well at uh, Hello Casey Win. Okay. If you guys like the trading and you're serious about trading and investing in cryptocurrencies, bitcoins and cryptocurrencies, make sure that you uh, go check out our cryptocurrency investing blueprint. It's at www.cryptocurrency.market slash blueprint and order your copy there. Okay? So, I will also, um, real quick also, I will be relocating back to uh, Vietnam. That's why I'm selling my house in Dallas. I'm going to be relocating to Vietnam and I'll be in Vietnam by the end of September. So, I'll be looking forward to you guys. I'll be doing some meetups, some conferences over there. And I look forward to seeing everyone when I get back to Southeast Asia, okay? Thanks for watching this video, guys. And I hope that this video, like always, inspires you to get off your ass. Go make a life of yourself. Go create the life of your dreams, right? Go get educated on how to do it and do it right. Quit jacking around. Quit goofing around trying to figure it out on your own, okay? And go create the life that you want to live and stop living someone else's life. Stop watching people on TV and admiring their life when you can go create your life, okay? So thanks for watching this video, guys, and I'll see you guys in a future video.